Hey everybody and welcome back. Today's video is about an awesome tool that I've recently been using to manage my home lab, which as we all know, anything that makes management of the home lab easier is a big win. So what is it and what does it do? Well, previously I've been using Visual Studio Code and recently I learned about Code Server. Now, Code Server is basically a drop-in replacement for Visual Studio Code that runs in your browser. So no more do you have to have separate installations of things like Visual Studio on each of the devices that you program on. No, you can have a centralized version that you'll log in seamlessly through a web browser. And that has a ton of advantages. So let me just go over those quickly and I'll start with the cons first. Now, when I first looked at this product, I was a little bit apprehensive. I thought, hmm, what's it gonna be like? Something that's browser-based. Is it gonna be laggy? What's gonna happen when it breaks connection, etc.? So I was somewhat appeased by the 70,000 stars that it's got on GitHub and I decided to test it out. Now those cons, I didn't really notice any difference. I experienced rapid responses when typing, saving, and provided the connection was reasonably stable, it would even survive some dropouts. Now let's get on to the positives. Why would you want to do this? Well, as I mentioned before, we can have a single instance for all of our coding. We don't need to worry about how we get this onto each machine every time we get a new one. So now my desktop, my laptop, and my programming VM can all benefit from just going to a web browser and logging in. And the best part is all of those configs are gonna be there because it's my profile. Other benefits include things like you don't have to compile code locally. So if you're working remotely on a laptop, A, it's not gonna drain the battery as much, and B, your server's likely more powerful, especially if this is in an enterprise setup where we're getting things like 128 cores, 256 threads in a single CPU. So let's have a quick look through code server. We're gonna be deploying that in Docker, and I'll show you as an example how to connect this into your GitHub and make your first commit. This will make managing all of your Docker Compose files and config files so much easier, and it's gonna be backed up within GitHub. Let's get onto it. And just as a little teaser, here is on the left-hand side, Visual Studio Code, and on the right-hand side is what we're gonna set up today. So as you can tell, they look and behave exactly the same. So heading over to the Code Server GitHub page, we've got all of the documentation that we need to spin this up. There's a few installation options here. There's single click scripts if you want to do this on a bare metal or a virtual machine or even something like an LXC, a Linux container. But I'm gonna be deploying this within Docker. So choose the one that's right for you. But the main thing is when we get into the configuration, all the steps should be the same. Now, thankfully our good old friends over at Linux server have an image for us that makes this easier along with the Docker compose file. So we're gonna copy this Docker compose file and tweak it for our setup. And what's really cool is we can even do this review now through our browser because I'm gonna push this up to my GitHub. So before we get started, let's look at the config file. It's really straightforward. We've got the image specified at the top. We've got the user of 1000, which is typically the user that you're gonna be logged in as. It certainly is in my case. We can specify some passwords. I've just left this as the default password, but you can change that to whatever you need. There's some hash passwords and pseudo passwords should you need to do that. That's more for things where you want to be doing things within the command line, within the program itself. So change or specify those if you need to. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. The proxy domain, and we're gonna be running this through a proxy, as you can see through the traffic labels, is just gonna be code server dot and then my domain. So you can change this to whatever you want, or if you don't want to run this through a proxy, you don't have to. It is a recommended thing to do though, so that it can validate the identity of the server, and it might make it easier for things like browser extensions and GitHub extensions, for example, so it can validate that you are who you say you are. Next, we need to specify the default workspace. So this is where it will store your workspace. So in this instance, my workspace is Jim's Garage, and this is my publicly available GitHub where I store all of my compose and config files. As I mentioned, I'm running this through a proxy, so I put the traffic labels here, and there's nothing special here if you've been following my other videos. Just remember that this by default runs on port 8443, so that's where I've specified it in the load balancer settings. So once you've tweaked your Docker compose file and copied that over to your Docker host, we should be ready to go. 
there's just one last thing we need to do and that's to make sure that the config folder which we have here as a bind mount is available so in my case i've gone into my docker folder i've created a code server and i've created that config folder now when i run this it should put all of the config files into that folder so let's get this up and running now so navigating to where our docker compose folder is stored we should be able to get this up and running in no time so in my instance it's the code server and if i run a sudo docker compose up dash d it should go away pull that image and deploy it without any issues this will then allow us to access it through the web GUI, either on your VM IP and port, or in my case, through your reverse proxy using SSL and a valid URL. So everything seems to have deployed okay. Let's go and check that in Portainer, and if everything's good, we should be able to reach it within the web GUI. So over on my Portainer, we can see that we've now got code server. So let's click the logs and let's have a quick look. It's written the default config file. It's listening on all interfaces on port 8443. The server is set correctly for my domain and it says done, everything looks good. So let's try and reach this now within our browser. So the first time you visit the page, you're gonna have your retinas burned out. But if you remember the password that you specified within the config file, for me, it's just password. So when you enter this, we should be logged in and we're presented with the first issue that we need to resolve. So we need to open a workspace. Now, if you remember, we specified what that default location was gonna be, and it was in the config file. So I'm gonna cancel this for now, and I'm gonna save my eyes. I'm gonna trust that the workspace slash Jim's garage is okay. And then I'm gonna browse the color themes and immediately change this to what I'm used to, which is dark visual studio. Ah much better so now that we have that out of the way we are pretty much ready to go we have visual studio within a browser excellent so one thing you're probably keen to do and i'm going to show you how to do in this tutorial is to connect this to your github so the first thing i'm going to do is press Control shift and p to open the ribbon at the top and then type in git cl which is clone so when i hit that it's gonna say, where do you want to clone from? And I wanna say GitHub, so I press return again. The extension GitHub wants to sign in using GitHub. So I'm gonna allow this. It's gonna give me a code, and thankfully, it copies and continues for you. So when I click this, it's gonna take me to GitHub. So I click open. I now need to log in with my GitHub credentials. When I hit sign in, it's going to ask for that code so I can paste it as plain text. Click continue once you've pasted it. And it's going to say that, do you want to authorize this server? I'm going to authorize it. Congratulations, you're all set. Your device is now connected. So this means now that our VS code is able to push and pull, do commits, etc., to our code. So one of the things we need to do is set up the workspace now. And I recommend you do this for all of your home labs. Just make sure that you're a little bit careful around secrets. It's not a good idea to be putting all of your secrets into GitHub. You wanna be using things like .env or .secret files so you can keep your secrets locally without having to upload those. So back now in code server, we can see that there's a couple of drop downs that are associated with my workspaces within my GitHub. I've got the top one, which is the publicly available one for all of my videos on YouTube. And I've got a static website here that's running Jekyll on GitHub. And I've got my own home lab one, which is my private one where I keep all of the configuration files for my private setup. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna store this, if you remember, in workspaces and I'm gonna click okay. Now, if we click on the files in the top left-hand corner, we should see all of the files that are available on my public GitHub. So for example, we can even see the code server that I uploaded the other day, just here. But there's one last thing we need to do before this will work. And we need to specify our email address and our user. That's because you can have numerous people working within the same workspace and they need to be identifiable. So thankfully that's really straightforward and we can even use the terminal built into the code server browser to do that. So let's get into it. 
So if we do a control shift P again and type in terminal, you want to find the option here for view toggle terminal and you can do that here with this handy shortcut. So once we click that, we should go into the terminal and we do here. So there's two commands that we need to run. The first one is this, it's git config global user email. So change this to your email address and then hit return. And the second thing we want to do is to add a username. So again, just change the value here to your name. Once those are both submitted, you should now be able to hit the commit tab. And let's see, I've changed this container name to test. I'll log into my GitHub in a moment and let's see if that change is reflected. So click commit. You're gonna have to give it an edit. So I'm gonna say change name to test. And when I hit the tick in the top right, that should then go and push it. We wanna sync those changes. Okay, it's because it's the first time I haven't actually done a push and a pull. Now that's committed, let me go to my public GitHub and see if that's changed. So over on my public GitHub, we can see that we've got code server. We can see there's a Docker compose file here. And with any luck, yeah, that container name has been changed and it's now test. Perfect. And you could even edit it on here within the browser on GitHub itself. And I could change that back to code server. And then I want to commit those changes. And now if I hop back into my code server and do a pull or a sync, it's going to then reflect that change within there. Let's do that quickly. So to do that, let's bring up the ribbon again, control shift P, and we're going to do a git pull. When we do this, it should then pull it down and sync it. And with any luck, if we go back into our Docker compose, we can now see that the container name is changed back to code server. Now, one thing to note is there is a handy extension for GitHub, which actually makes this process a little bit easier. It has a friendlier UI in my opinion, but I just wanted to show you how you actually do this with some of the built-in tools, just in case you didn't want to use an extension. And you can just install the GitHub pull and requests. That'll install really quickly, and then it will give you a new icon on the left here. And you can then sign in again with this we signed in using the native tool within code server but you can also sign in with this extension and that'll give you a bit more granular access and friendly buttons within the ui you won't have to keep pressing Control shift and p so thanks for watching guys that was a really quick video but i just wanted to share this tool with you because i think it's a really awesome way of amending your files syncing them up to github so that they're nice and safe and being able to pull them and edit them in a much more friendly way rather than the text editor i hope you enjoy using it it's now my daily driver Thanks for watching guys, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Take care everybody.